Welcome back. Today I'm working on weaknesses and specifically this time forced checkmate sequences. I often get into a position in a game where I know I'm winning or I know I have an advantage, I know I have greater chances, but I'm not sure that I have a forced checkmate sequence on the board. And sometimes I do and, you know, don't know it. Sometimes as much as made in one. Uh, a game I analyzed, one of my own, uh, just a few days ago, ended up with multiple checkmate, forced checkmate sequences that I missed. Um, and I, it's the first one was on move 10. So I'm just going to take you there fairly quickly. Uh, we weren't playing all the best moves here, but we also weren't really blundering at this point. Here I made my normal decision to pull this bishop back. In case they trade, I can uh, open the H file for this rook. Uh, they didn't take just yet, but I realized I, maybe I could force them to take. After they castled, I played c5, which this bishop now is trapped. It basically, the only good move is for it to take this one. Um, so it did, and I took back. This sets up a, you know, interesting situation here. And I put my bishop here ready to take advantage of it. Uh, not really thinking what I would do if they just pushed h6 which blocks the rook from the h7 square. But they didn't do that. They did this, and I took the pawn. Okay, now that's my 10th move. And the only good move for black is to come back and basically uncastle their king, I, I guess is what that's supposed to be about. But they didn't. They went there. So now, if you're looking at the engine, I have a forced checkmate sequence, six or fewer moves, Two different ways. So, now I I did I during the game I did briefly consider knight captures e5. One reason is because the knight is in the way of my queen, and my queen can immediately go here because the bishop's not in trouble, right? I briefly considered that uh, if they take it, I'll shoot right through here. That's what I was thinking. And uh, I didn't know what they could do about it. But I also wasn't sure that that was really great. And so I didn't do it. I hesitated. This, this was a, a slightly longer blitz game, 5 plus 3. So almost a rapid game. But the computer says that's definitely what I should do. And it would even work if I went here and just give up the knight. And even if they didn't take, even if they played their best move... I would have a forced checkmate sequence. But let's just follow out the one that I did consider, which is knight captures e5. Now, it says they can either put their bishop here, which is just giving me a free bishop. Um, yeah, or, or g6. I think if they played g6, uh, I would have just taken... the pawn with my bishop because that would have put them in check any move of this bishop puts them in check so that's check they can't take back right now and they have their best move is to go here then that's check now where can they go only one legal move then I bring the queen what can they do what can they do it says they have multiple options here. It doesn't matter. They can play a uh, a6. They can play f5. They can play b6. I, I don't know what else they can do or what any of those accomplishes. But there's that. And now, bishop to f7 check. Because the queen guards the bishop, the rook guards the bishop. The queen guards the rook, so the king can't move. The only option is for the rook to capture back. And that's mate. But I didn't see that uh, way back there at this point. Like I said, I did consider this knowing that it would allow my queen over here, but I didn't follow out that whole, um, whole idea. Now, I know it would have been faster if they had just taken the knight. Now it's they've skipped a move to mate. And it says, I can just pull the bishop back, put them in check. The king, uh, they can block here is one option. But it says it doesn't really matter either way. It's going to be made in two or three. 
They move here. My bishop is cutting off both of those squares. And yes, the knight can capture it, but it can't because I'm going to put them in check again. So they have to move out of check. And the only way to move out of check is to capture that piece. And now my queen comes. Their only move is there. And that was mate. So I should have gone with that first instinct of capturing here. I, I admit I didn't even follow out the line of moving that. I never would have seen that. I would have seen this because it's a little bit of a subterfuge for people at my level. Uh, they would have been extremely tempted to capture back with the knight or probably the pawn, since my pawn also guards that square. And if they had captured back with the pawn, you just saw what would have happened. But the next, uh, the next force checkmate sequence that I had was on move 23. So I'm just going to skip to move 23 in this position. Now here, you can see from the engine that I do have a very large advantage already. Um, and I knew at this point that I had an advantage because I had dragged the king out of its square. We had traded off queens down here in this corner. And here, surprisingly, black's only good move is to just step back one. But what they did was, I guess, saw that my knight is unprotected. So they went toward it. And now I have mate in one, two different ways. This is the one I'm most embarrassed about in this game because all the other ones were mate in four, mate in six. Here, right there is checkmate. And right there is checkmate. So this one, I mean, even if I didn't know they were checkmate, they were both checks. I should have just seen that's a check and removes a piece. I, I and I had already been eyeing that piece, thinking it's a free piece. I could just take it with my rook. But one of the reasons I had moved my knight in here in the first place was to challenge this rook that that really couldn't go anywhere, and so I took it. That was my next move, and it's in an accuracy because I, I just clean missed two different ways to mate in one, and the pawns guard these two squares and wherever the knight moves it's going to guard the square that it's currently on because that's the way knights move um, so whether it moved to either one of those it's going to be guarding this square these two pawns guard these two squares the rook of course cuts off all those squares so the king can't go anywhere so yeah so made in one or made in one and I missed that, and I've got to be able to see that, especially when I have two full minutes left in this game. And knowing that I have an advantage, but I think that was one thing that was weighing on me just a little bit, is my opponent has twice as much time as I did. So I was trying to move quickly, and here I knew that it would be to my advantage in the long run if I can't find mate in immediately. It would be in, to my advantage in the long run to remove this rook from the board. So that's what I did and the king captured back. Obviously still leaving me with a large advantage, but having missed mate in one, which is, is not the best thing to do. And four moves later, on move 27, I had another mating sequence. Okay. Well, you can see it's already saying made in six. And then when the king moved here, made in six. Okay. So this one might be, this one's harder to see than that made in one. And it's, and for me, it's definitely harder to see than the, the sequence of back on move 10. Because on that one, you, you know, I, like I said, I, I did see the possible knight sacrifice to get my queen across to the H file. This one, I don't know that I would have seen because it involves just giving up this knight. And starting with rook to f7 check, this is, this is not what I did, but it's what I should have seen. Right here, the king has two choices. Here, because it, it can't move there because of the knight, right? So it can go here, which is a, you know, a legal move, or here. Because again, these two pawns cut off these two squares. This pawn helps with that one. The knight guards this one. The rook hits these. Um, and the bishop guards that one. So there's only two possibilities. And the uh, surprisingly to me, 
If the king chose this one, it's made in one. Right here. The bishop, knight, pawn, rook, other pawn. Blocks off all those squares. And if it shows the best move, which is taking the knight, that's what I was worried about. If I did anything but move the knight or protect it, the king would take it. But as it turns out, I'm supposed to let the king take it. Then I'm supposed to move my king up to protect this pawn. Because now this, this pawn is hanging, right? Rather than, uh, because if I follow with a check or a check, this king can just take my pawn. So the best move now for me Actually, it says that it says that one also results in made in five, but it, I'm not sure exactly how. Um, but yeah, so king here to protect this pawn, and then it doesn't really matter what they do. At this point, it's either mate in four, mate in two, mate in one. But how? So let's just say they they did the best one, which is what the computer says. And now, I'm supposed to know to either do this. Or this move my rook to one of those squares I how would I see that it's not even check most of the checkmating sequences that I'm accustomed to are check but I'm gonna I'm following this out so that I will figure out how and it honestly says that at this point black's best move is just to take this pawn Wow and I'm not even supposed to take back I'm supposed to sacrifice this rook right here and now I have made in two one is there because this pawn can't hit it anymore now where does the king go it only has one legal move and that's me because the rook guards this pawn and this square and this pawn my G second G pawn guards the rook which also guards these squares and my bishop cuts off those and that pawn cuts off that one and that's what I'm failing to see certainly in the heat of the moment in these games is uh, and let's go back to that starting uh, position where the king moved there and I have made in six I have less than two minutes left my opponent has nearly four minutes but I have to be able to see which squares are cut off by which pieces, these pawns, and so on. And then, of course, once the rook is over here, it's going to be cutting off all of these squares. And so what I want is the king to take this. And then, of course, if I protect this pawn, they're, and then they're all protecting each other. The bishop is still cutting off these squares. The rook is going to be here cutting off all these squares. But now that I followed this through in analysis, I think I'll have a better chance of seeing it in the future. Now, believe it or not, there was another one right after this, after I made the wrong move. The move that I made was to protect my knight. I brought it back, which takes away the forced checkmate sequence. But I figured from here, my knight guards those two squares. And again, I, I, I am at least thinking about cutting off all these squares around the king. Um, and I protected and preserved my knight. This this guy hasn't moved the whole game. Um, this knight started out way over here. I don't even remember how it ended up getting over there. But this rook hasn't moved the whole game. I I have a rook that can come out at any minute. And But here, my opponent played that. And you look, the evaluation just jumped. I have a maiden four again. But I didn't see it. It involves another giveaway, basically, to check with this pawn which I didn't do, but it basically draws the king over here because as I've said, I'm cutting off these squares already with my, you know, with my other pieces. What other, they can't do their planned fork over here because they're in check. And there's only so many ways to go. Their best move is to take it. And then I have a check. I probably wouldn't have done that because that bishop is guarding this this fork square here where the knight is intending to go. But it's a force checkmate sequence. Now, where can the king go? It can either go to g3 or to g5. If it goes to g3, which is the best one, 
I have to move my king over to protect this pawn. And then it really doesn't matter what they do, any, any move that they make at this point. Uh, let's just say that one. That's going to be checkmate. Because my king's guarding this pawn, my rook's guarding down through here, the knight is guarding this, the pawns are guarding these, the bishop's guarding that one, and this pawn is guarding there. So the king is cut off. But I was worried about the fork. Even though my bishop was guarding this. So I thought I can do two things at once. If I want to eventually move my bishop out here, uh, well, and another reason is that I wanted to say check here, but now I can't because of that knight. So what I did was I castled long, which was still reserved for me, but that also gets my rook out, which was something I wa had been wanting to do for a little bit because just like their rook, mine hadn't moved either. So this isn't horrible. I still have, you know, a huge advantage, much greater chances of winning than my opponent. And But now they can check me down here or here, and they did, they chose that one, but... Uh, I just get out of that. And now I have a forced mating sequence again. Now, admittedly, uh, this one is a little bit longer. It's checkmate in eight. Uh, but again, I, I wanted to get this rook out. So once I moved out of check, I, they don't have much they can do. And they did a the wrong move, trying to just an empty threat on this rook. But now it's down to mate in six. And I should have seen this. Because not only is it getting the, the rook out of danger, but it's pinning this knight to the queen. It's just going to win a knight. And, uh, but I, you know, i a little more sophisticated. I know I don't have to move a piece out of danger if I can do something uh, more dangerous, which is check. And uh, so, you know, that's what I did. I know the king can't come to protect this knight, so it doesn't really matter. And now where's the king going to go? But now I, I've lost my forced checkmate sequence is the problem with that move. But they went back, and then I put the rook there. They can't go back any further because of my other rook. And they can't come forward again because of my bishop. They can't come forward here because of this pawn. So they're, they're about to run out of options, and uh, I'm about to take this knight. Now, this is where they resigned. Oh, the computer has eventually found uh, made an 11 here, but I didn't need that at this point. At this point, I know I'm one. I know I'm about to take this knight, no matter what they do. Uh, if they try to get this knight out, I'm going to take it. That's why it's stuck there. Uh, and because it's stuck there, this rook really can't do anything. Uh, they could move one of these pawns, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, this is the kind of in-game checkmating sequence where I know I can do it. My my only problem is likely going to be this pawn being in the way of some rook maneuvers. So let's just say they tried to get this rook out this way, and I took this. Um, you know, again, they can't move back. Uh, what's their only legal move is to go here or here, I think. So let's say they went there. Then I know I have a follow-up check here. Now, what's their only move? To come here? Oh, and sneaky. I don't know if I would have seen this. Maiden one. I, I probably uh, would not have done that. I probably would have done this. Which, oh, as, that also turns out to be checkmate. Okay. Um, because the knight is guarding this pawn. But, as you see, in this game, I had several uh, checkmating opportunities that I missed. And of course, the most embarrassing one was when uh, was in this situation where I had made in one. So, this is obviously, at least for me, an argument to play longer games, uh, which is what I have been doing. This is one reason this blitz game was longer than my three plus twos. But even my rapid games, I've begun to play like trying to play ten plus five or ten plus ten, and uh, not really classical because I have other things to do. Most of the time, I can't devote full time to this study, but, but I am trying to play slightly longer games so I can have a second to think. I do have checks here. And also to stop and look at which squares will be cut off by which pieces. And I know inherently that wherever a piece moves, it's guarding the square it just came from. When the knight goes here, it's, it's also going to be cutting off this square. Um... Another thing, 
if you're looking at the engine, is this. To protect the knight and prepare something like uh, like that. Even if I didn't see that that was made, I could see that this protects the knight and sets up a discover check in the future. Um, but I'm working on it and just looking at these and seeing these constantly over and over and over again, I think will be the answer that I need. So thank you for watching. I know this one's long. Uh, that's the way these studies go sometimes. <laughs>